copy of Section 8-11, and the purpose of this is to remind all of you that members of zoning boards of appeals are required to disqualify themselves in matters uh, where um, it says specifically, no member of any zoning board of appeals shall participate in the hearing or decision of the board or commission of which he is a member upon any matter in which he is directly or indirectly interested in a personal or financial sense. So, what that means, the financial sense is pretty obvious. If one of you were a partner with Mr. Trzauskas in any enterprise, then you probably should recuse yourself, and you could be guided by Mr. Ryback on these issues. If any of you had a business relationship with him, you should recuse yourself. If any of you have a personal relationship, you should likewise recuse yourself. One of the personal relationships might be that you're in the same business as he is, working for the same company. Now, there is a company known as Ambit Energy, which is out of Texas. And Mr. Trzaskis says that he is a consultant for that particular company. And according to information that we have received, uh, Mr. Root Jr. is also a consultant for Ambit Energy. So I bring that to your attention, because if I don't, then the court will say, should there be an appeal, that I didn't ask Mr. Root to disqualify himself because of that relationship. Now, Mike will tell you, uh, each one of you has to make that own decision for yourself. But the important thing of your role just as the Zoning Commission's role for any member of any public official in any town, municipality in the state of Connecticut is not only whether you have a conflict of interest, but whether there's an appearance of a conflict of interest. And I would suggest to you that clearly there is an appearance should Mr. Green <coughs> be consulting for the same company that Mr. Trzaskis is consulting. And so I asked Mr. Root to recuse himself for the record. It doesn't matter on one night whether it's being serviced or not being serviced under 6.19. It doesn't matter one item. What matters is if these people in these room, in this room, who are neighbors, find that it's reasonable to conclude that a business is being run on this property, then he can't keep the equipment there. It's as simple as that. Mr. Perkins is your zoning enforcement official. He's charged with enforcing the regulations. You pay him and support him to do this. We want you to support his order. We want you to deny Mr. Trusowskis' appeal. Basically, throughout the years, there was just no hope for us. We just dealt with it in hopes that after that meeting had happened, the gist of the meeting, what my husband had said was we were all supposed to get along, he was gonna finish up work on his property, and all that stuff was gonna be done and pulled out. Look where we are now, eight years later. So my question is, is how should the board interpret information provided by the public in its decision-making process, or can we? You absolutely can. That's why this is a public hearing and not just an appeal. The purpose of which is to develop a record of documents, exhibits, and testimony. You are the trier of fact. You weigh the evidence. Not all evidence is accorded the same weight. But it's up to you ultimately to find the facts and apply the regulations to the facts to determine the outcome. So yes, you should consider it. And you should question witnesses if you need more information. Sure. I also was witness to a very inhumane um, uh, activity uh, with the Genovese's horse when I unfortunately witnessed Mr. Shostowskis in some kind of vehicle. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what it was, but his, the horse was in their, um, I don't know, uh, fenced area 
and the machine just kept going up to the horse. The horse was rearing up, and it, he just kept doing it. And it, I'm sorry, but it seemed purposeful. That's all I have to say. And I don't have a dog in the fight here, but I do have some questions because I am concerned about good government. I would, I'm very concerned about conflict of interest as a board, and that's an issue that I'm going to look at after you make your decision. Uh, that's not a question, that's just a comment. But I do have a question on agriculture. There was a lot of talk about bringing manure in and the 490 tax abatement, which I know a lot about. My question is, what crops are being grown on the property? There are no crops being grown. If there's no crops, I don't believe that there's any income being derived from agriculture on this property, period. Mm -hmm. it's, if anything, it's probably just a normal guy. I think uh, when the attendant on the service to a property, overnight vehicle, commercial vehicle, your well goes down. You come in, you gotta drill a new well. Truck's there a couple days, right? You gotta drill a new well. Overnight parking. Your boiler goes out. Come in, you got a big work in the house. Service. Vehicle that's providing a service. I think it has to be service. Right. Yeah. Comment. Well, what if the brakes go and you gotta fix the vehicle? It shouldn't be here in the first place. Okay. So I just uh, these are things that are going on in this town that shouldn't be happening. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is the amount of money that the chairman of our zoning board has just cost the town of Arlington. And not only that, but private citizens. <coughs> Okay, had to come out here, spend their hard-earned money to turn around and get what they were, should be automatically entitled to under the ordinances that are set by in this town. They had to turn around and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Never mind, I'm sure uh, Attorney Ryback has put a lot of time, a lot of extra time going through everything. Mr. Burns, I'm sure you're not here. I'm pro bono, correct? <laughs> All right. He's clocked the town a lot of money. He's an official of the town, okay? That's our tax dollars. That our own town official is costing us because for some reason, he doesn't want to turn around and go rent the place. Uh, good evening, my name is Chris Wall and I'm an 18 year resident of Harlington on Shingle Mill Road. Um, I'm an attorney, but I'm official, uh, fish out of water and land use matters. Um, but I would like to personally thank uh, the Genovese family for their efforts in compiling the information uh, that was given to this uh, board tonight. And also, although I can't believe I'm saying this in a public forum, thank Attorney Grimes for a stellar presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, insisting the board on making a proper decision. He, uh, he stole a lot of my thunder, but did so so eloquently that I really don't mind it. I just wanted to touch on one thing as well with regard to Attorney Fabriello asking about uh, signage and whether uh, Mr. Perkins ever observed any signs outside of Mr. Juskowski's property to which he said no. And when I looked through some old uh, zoning minutes provided uh, by a few other residents of the town, I noted uh, zoning um, notes from February 23, 2004, and at that time Mr. Juskowski lived at 40 Bull Road and uh, he was involved uh, then with that property for a possible commercial use in a residential zone. Mr. Prezaitis, who I take it was the zoning enforcement officer back then, questioned the sign that was in the front yard to which Mr. Truskowski stated uh, that uh, he had put the sign out in November and would remove it. You see, Mr. Truskowski has been flouting zoning laws for longer than just a few years. That goes back over a decade. Um, and he just simply learned in 2004 not to put a sign out. Uh, and that is the reason. If I could just submit the notes from that 22304, it doesn't have anything to do with the property in Scoville Hill Road, but it does show a pattern of conduct. Is that proper, Mr. Rapper? I hope you're not asking for the evidentiary. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, mark it as an exhibit and let it in for what it's worth. Uh, 18? Exhibit 18. And uh, just lastly and, and quickly, I know that we're here talking about these two uh, provisions of the zoning laws, in particular 619 and 620, but I would also ask that the board review section 1.1, which is the purpose of the zoning regulations for the town of Harlington. The purpose includes to conserve the value of buildings and property. 
The, the purpose of the zoning regulations also exists to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the residents of Farmington. These are not violations that are sort of easily made, and I wouldn't expect Attorney Perkins to, um, to Mr. Perkins to cite those, but this is what the zoning regulations are all about, and this is why the Genovese family has incurred great legal expense and very much time to compile this data to uh, assist you in making a proper decision. I think Mr. Truskowskis has been trampling on the fundamental purpose of the zoning regulations. I think his use of the scope of the road property is a blight in our town. I moved to this town 18 years ago to have quiet enjoyment of my property. I'm blessed on Shingle Mill Road with fantastic neighbors who are always considerate of each other. Uh, and I'm just outraged over his blatant disregard of zoning regulations. And I'm only further inflamed by the fact that he does this when he is the uh, chairman of our own zoning commission. So I ask you to protect our town, to enforce our regulations, and to burst this delusional bubble that Don Kuskowskis <coughs> inexplicably lives in. Thank you. Thank you.